Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Brittany and I blog at the blog by BrittanyGoldwin.com, mostly about DIY home, garden, and houseplants. And today I have another plant care video for you for some of my favorite easiest houseplants, Philodendron heteraceum. So Philodendron heteraceum, the variety that you're probably most familiar with is this one over here. Um, it's commonly referred to as the Hartley Philodendron. So we'll talk about the different varieties. We'll talk about the care for this plant, light, water, soil, those basics, temperature and humidity. And then I'll talk a little bit about pruning, propagation and upkeep for this plant. All right, so I'm sitting in my sunroom right now, which gets really great light from the morning back there all the way into the early evening. It has windows on three sides, uh, but I actually only have one of these philodendrons in this room all the time. And that is this one right here. Um, I have this one in a window that gets loads and loads of bright indirect light. Um, and then I have this one here in front of a window that gets only morning sun in the front of the house. And then I've actually had this one in my daughter's room, which some days we even forget to open her blinds altogether. So it may get no light some days. Um, so you can see all three of the plants look really great, which tells you that this is a very flexible plant with lighting requirements. So if you do live in a house that doesn't have the best light, this might be a good choice for you. Um, it's a pretty easy plant with light. That said, you will notice that as your light levels get lower, the plant will grow a little bit slower um, and the growth may be a little bit leggy. And what leggy means is, I'll show you a close up shot on, um, on the screen here, but I'll also show, gosh, this guy is so long, he's so tangled. Um, this one that I've had in my daughter's room, you can see the growth on the top is pretty big, pretty healthy. But then as you get farther down to the more recent growth, you can see that there's a little bit more space between um, each of the leaves on the stems. And you can also see that the leaves are a little bit smaller. And this is what's referred to as leggy growth. And that happens when the plant is literally reaching for more light. Um, the, it gets more space between the leaves and the leaves get smaller. And a lot of times this happens to my trailing plants in the winter when they don't get as much light. Generally, what I do is just prune them off and propagate them. And I'll talk about that a little bit more in the pruning section. Um, just something to keep in mind if you do have this plant in lower light levels. Bright indirect light is the best. So I have this plant in a variety of different soil mixtures. Um, philodendrons are typically pretty flexible as long as the soil is very well draining. They're very prone to root rot, which can happen when you overwater their plant, when the soil is too dense or a mixture of both of those things. Um, this one right here, the Philodendron heteraceum Brazil, you can see the variegation on it. It's gorgeous. Um, another reason why I have this one in a little bit higher of light is the variegation. Um, but this one I still have in the soil. It came in from the nursery. I have not had to repot this one yet. This one I've had for several years and I've repotted a couple of times. Um, and this one I've repotted maybe once or twice. So when I repotted these two, I started with an indoor plant mix as my base. And then I added in a little bit of extra um, cocoa coir, which is a great alternative to peat moss, much more sustainable, and a little bit of extra perlite. Um, they've been pretty happy in that mix. Honestly, I probably did not have to add anything to those mixes since these plants are generally pretty tolerant of many different types of well-draining soils. When you water these plants, um, you definitely want to make sure you give them a thorough soak, a deep watering is what a lot of people refer to that as. Water the plant very thoroughly and deeply, soaking the soil and letting all of that extra water drain out of the drainage holes. All three of these plants are hanging planters, but they all have drainage holes in them. This one came with a drainage saucer attached to it. Um, I don't think this one does. When I water these plants, I usually set them in the sink and um, so all the excess water can just go down the drain or the tub if I'm watering in bulk. One of the things I like to do with these plants, since you can see they can just get really tangled and messy looking, um, or some would say nice and full and lush looking, um, when I water them, I like to rinse off all of the foliage too. These can be real dust magnets and it's just a general best practice with pest prevention as well. 
um, and to help with optimal care of your plant to keep the leaves as clean as possible. I don't use leaf shine or anything like that on these. I just rinse them off top and bottom. I lift it up just like this and spray a, a handheld sprayer in there, um, something like that. It's also great to water these outside if it's nice where you live. You can use a hose and just completely drench them and then let them dry naturally before you bring them back inside. Um, speaking of outside, these two, the first year I got them, I actually had them outside and they did great, which leads me to the next section, which is temperature and humidity. And one of the reasons why I think these plants did so well outdoors the first year I had them is because it gets very hot and humid where I live. These plants love humidity. I mean, they were spitting out huge leaves and they were growing like absolute weeds outdoors. I had them on in my old house in our covered patio that just got a little bit of dappled sunlight through the deck slats above and then maybe a little bit of direct morning sun. Otherwise it was all bright shade, so it had ideal growing temperatures, bright shade, bright and direct light, lots of humidity and very warm temperatures. And as long as I kept them watered, they really just grew like weeds. So it's kind of sad to have to bring them indoors after that. But like I said, they're pretty happy inside too. In terms of how often to water this plant, I mentioned that these are pretty prone to root rot. So I would say the most common killer of these plants is actually watering them too much. A lot of people think that you need to water your plants multiple times a week or every day. It's not like having a garden outside. The water evaporates much more slowly and these plants don't need as much water. They're just not as thirsty. Generally in the spring and summer, I water mine about once a week and then in the winter about every 10 to 14 days. Right now I'm kind of in that awkward in between period where it might, seven days might be too often, 14 days might not be watering enough. So I just stick my finger in the soil or with the hanging plants, it's great too because after you've had them for a while, you start to know when you lift them up. Um, you just know if it's, if it's pretty heavy, like it's still got a lot of water in there, but if it's super light, then it's probably time to water it. So you really get to know your plants after taking care of them for a while. Now I mentioned leggy growth on these. So I want to talk a little bit about pruning here. I'll show you on this, uh, Heteraceum Brazil. You can see that it has very lush foliage near the top. But at the bottom, I, while I was waiting for my sunroom to be ready to move into, I had this plant in an area that didn't get the best light. So you can see in the bottom, it's actually kept some really great variegation, but the leaf size is, has definitely gotten smaller and um, there's definitely a little bit more space between the leaves. So what I will probably do, I might let this one go all winter, honestly, because I get leggy growth every winter where I live. Um, I'll probably just chop it like right here. Um, a lot of people are afraid to cut their plants. I am not afraid to cut my plants. I love pruning my plants. I go at them with scissors all the time because it helps to encourage fullness on these. You can see how full the top is here. And then these longer strands, you might like that look, but you might want to encourage some more fullness. And when you trim these, what you're doing is encouraging some branching on the plants which is really great for encouraging a fuller look to your plant. This is a plant that I've done a lot of pruning on and it really shows with the fullness, I think. Be careful here. It has that great trailing look that everyone loves with these types of philodendrons, but it's also very full because I've pruned it so much. I've encouraged so much branching on this one that it's so full, you can barely even see the pot under it and you can barely even see me when I get behind it. And I just, I love that look with them. It looks so big and so healthy. So that's one of the things that I like to do to keep my plants happy and full and looking uh, their healthiest. When you do prune these plants, you don't have to throw out the cuttings. This is a very easy plant to propagate and I'll show you a close up shot here, but really all you wanna do is take a cutting with a couple leaves, make sure it has a couple growth points on it and the growth points are where the leaves emerge from the stems. And I really like water propagation for these plants because they're just so easy to propagate. Um, I don't like to complicate things if I don't have to, and this is a variety that you don't really have to mess with any of the other propagation methods that can be a little bit more labor intensive. 
All you need to propagate this one is a clear glass of any kind, just because I like to monitor the root development through the glass and refresh the water every week. And soon you will have roots beginning to develop. Once the roots are a couple inches long, you can transplant the cutting to well-draining soil and keep it, keep it moist for a little while and it will eventually become its own plant. Every spring I trim all of the leggy growth off of mine and I just give it away for free in my local plant group because I know there are a lot of people like me who cannot throw plants away, but I simply do not have room for that many more plants. So I usually give them away. One thing I do want to note about these plants is that if you have pets, these are not meant to be ingested. You do not want to let your cats or dogs or whatever you have chew on these plants. Now I do have two cats. One of them is very interested in plants. So what I typically do with these um, is I keep them hanging. He's an older cat now. So maybe when he was a kitten, he would have tried to do some crazy moves to get to them. But when I hang my plants, unless they're trailing all the way down to the ground, he does not bother them at all. So I keep these, these two hang up pretty high. And then this one I have on the top of a very high shelf next to our TV, which he does not go to. And before when I had it in my daughter's room, he's terrified of her anyway, so he never went in there to bother it. But it is something to keep in mind. Um, you want to hang these, you want to put them up high, put them in some sort of a glass greenhouse cabinet to keep them away from your animals or children if they are um, interested in your plants and if they are prone to having a little nibble of things that they shouldn't. As far as where to get a philodendron heteraceum, you can find this one like everywhere. I mean, this is, I'd say, one of the most common houseplants out there, just the all green variety. Um, I got this one at a grocery store. This one is a lemon lime variety. I also got this one at a grocery store for $10, if you can believe it. And it wasn't much smaller than this because I've been pruning it so much over the years that it hasn't gotten much longer, um, just a lot fuller. And then the Brazil variety, you can get this one increasingly lots more places. Um, I got this one from a local nursery. You can occasionally find them for cheaper in big box stores. Um, I like to support local nurseries when I can. It is more expensive and you may not have access to one where you live, but you typically do get healthier plants if you do have that option and if it works for you and you can afford it, I definitely think that's the route to go with most plants. That said, I am not a plant elitist. I totally will score a deal like I did for $10 at the grocery store with this one. Um, and I would encourage you to do the same if that works for you. Um, there are other varieties of this plant, of the heteraceum that you can find. There's the uh, velvet leaf variety, which has a darker look to the leaves and they have a really velvet finish. Um, I actually have one of those that I just chopped up and I have it in water propagating. So I will get some footage of that to throw up here while I'm talking um, and also to show you more about the propagation process. I have had that one in water for so long Long. I've just been putting off, putting it in soil. Um, it really shows you how resilient this plant is that it's been living in water with and growing with no nutrients, but the water, that's it. Um, there are other varieties of the variegated type that are more rare and more expensive and harder to find. I haven't gotten any of those yet because honestly, I think that these, while they're common, they're just so beautiful and luscious looking that you know, I don't feel like I need to spend the extra money to get another one. Though, if you have the chance to see some of the other variegated and harder to find varieties, um, definitely let me know what you think. I think they're beautiful. They're just not, when I prioritize my plant budget, something that I want to buy right now. So that about wraps up my philodendron heteraceum video. I will link a couple posts I have on my blog about propagating this variety, um, a couple care posts for the different varieties that I own um, below if you're interested in checking those out. Um, yeah, so make sure to hit the subscribe button and I will be back with more care videos hopefully soon. I'm trying to make more care videos. It's just, you know, carving out the time um, to talk about some of my favorite plant babies. But until then, uh, feel free to check out my other videos and visit my blog and um, happy planting.